okay, so I I don't know like what to do because like so who here has never heard of drive chain or BIP three hundred at all? Like that would be great. You can raise your hand. That's fine. So I can like, kind of like half or whatever. <laughs> so um, it's an idea for this proposal with Bitcoin that you would just be able to send coins to a completely different piece of software and get them back. And in that way, if someone says, someone asks you a question like, uh, well, Bitcoin is great, like some noob or someone that uh, you, you, some random guy off the street, they say, well, Bitcoin is great, but can it do DeFi or can it do whatever, ZK Snarks? You just say, yes, it can, because of Bit 300, and you just stop talking. You just say that just like one thing. And uh, because with Bit 300, they can do whatever they want. They create their own piece of software, and then you have to send the coin. It starts with zero Bitcoins on it, and people have to voluntarily send the coins over. So the, you have this world of, of competing development teams. Uh, you don't have the world that we have in Bitcoin today, where everyone kind of talks things out and tries to agree on what's best. You have this world where all these different people compete, and they're accountable to the users, and if the users don't send coins over, then the project is a failure. So that's kind of the idea. Uh, if you don't know anything about it at all, we could do it like drivechain.info has like an enormous amount of information and slowly keep adding more and more stuff to over time. Um, and drivechain is basically bit 300 plus bit 301, which is this thing blind merge mining. Um, and so we have software on the site that you can download. We even have Windows versions, the Windows EXE version, so you have no excuse for not downloading it and examining it for yourself um, to see how it works, which is the best way to learn about anything. So I don't know, I, you know, we said like drive chain Q&A, but half the people have never heard of it at all, so I don't know exactly what that means. But those of you who have heard of it, I get lots of questions. That's where I, literally where I was before I was today. I was at the speaker dinner for uh, the, the speakers at Bitcoin 2021, and people were coming up to me and asking me drive chain questions the whole time. So that's that's what I was just doing. And through so, so through Socratic uh, questioning, we can slowly learn about drive chain. I think it is better if people ask a question. Okay, Austin, yes. So if you have this, the base chain and then you yes. have the side chain, how can the miners and the nodes on the base chain know anything what's happening on the second layer chain, and how do we know when the withdrawal is happening if it's going in the right spot? It's being withdrawn in the right TXO. You know what I'm saying? Well, the, yeah, the, the design is the layers only go in one direction, so you, you can ignore all the upper layers. So if you wanted to know what's happening on layer two, you download the software and run it, and then it will, it will tell you eventually. So what's happening in layer two? What's the mechanics of withdrawing the coins back into layer one where they're safe, nice the, and safe? The, the trick is, the, what, what a lot of people don't understand, yeah, this, they are better on layer one. There's no, I agree that there's no um, parity between layer, layer one is better than layer two. It's better to not have the coins on the layer two because layer two is a risk. But the layer two also offers the opportunity to do these different things, the ring signatures, ZK snarks, whatever. So. The, 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 what a lot of people don't understand is that it would be trivial to make it work 100% of the time infallibly. If you could make it perfect if you just said that it was a requirement that everyone who ran Bitcoin Core Layer 1 had to also run Layer 2. You could make it mandatory. And then everything would work perfectly. But what people don't understand is that that, if that would be easy to do, but that would actually be its own nightmare because then you would be beholden to whatever the people on layer two want you to do and they could make the block size an unlimited size or they could have all these crazy ideas, stuff involving secret keys that only the government knows and all kinds of other nonsense like that. So the, the trick is actually to try and do some kind of trade-off where you don't um, you don't, it is in fact possible to ignore layer two as much as possible, and yet the people who use layer two still have assurances that they will actually, some assurance that they would get their money back. If they get coins on layer two, they will be able to redeem them. If you have 13 Bitcoin on layer two, you'd be able to redeem it for 13 Bitcoin on layer one. So your question is very long, but we have another question. I'm just gonna just 
cut you off right there because I think it gets a bad attitude when you ask the question. You're very disingenuous, disingenuous enthusiasm. So we're going to the next question. I think I think we were speaking a lot about um, RSK and liquid. So uh, I guess a good way to go into drive chain is how we compare it or how it does it compare or how does it, does it complement? Yes. Sergio actually wrote an entire BIP for DriveChain and coded an implementation in 2016, long before Donald Trump was elected president. It was like a million, it was like a gajillion years ago. But the, the thing is, Ethereum is a good example because you have these two things. One is people objectively want the new features, which is that people do like the ERC-20 token, they like the NFT. Yeah, it's, it, you know, people try to deny it or write it all off as like a scam or something, but that, I don't agree with that. But the other thing is, a lot of it, what Ethereum is, is a scam. <laughs> and it is mostly a narrative. But either way, if you just say, we're just gonna copy it wholesale, and you just copy the EVM, the Ethereum virtual machine, into something, then you, know, you win either way. You, you have the features, and also the marketing is sort of destroyed, because you, people try to shill some narrative about, oh, Ethereum has smart contracts, but it's like, we have our own bit Ethereum that is like an exact clone of that. So the, the mysterious thing with the RSK though is that they have been working on this since 2015 and uh, it's very hard for many people to understand like what they have been doing this whole time. That's just my opinion. I know I speak for a lot of people when I say like what exactly is going on over there. But, uh, but they have been working hard on copying the EVM for you know the last Seven, seven years. I don't know if that answers your question or not. But what, what was your what question though? Like, yes, it was just to, you know, to start the conversation, questions, how does it compare to RSK or to Liquid or how does it compare? Yeah, well, to so you would need, Bit 300 is like the bridge from the layer one Bitcoin core to some other arbitrary pieces of software. So one of those pieces of software would be RSK. So like today it's a federated bridge, but with drive chain it would be Hash rate escrow. The, the federation is, I think, a step backward because we had uh, the whole innovation of Bitcoin is the dynamic membership, multi-signature scheme of, of mining, where you have this this thing where it doesn't matter how if a meteors fall from the sky and destroy ninety percent of the mining equipment, you have a way of recovering from that, and if ninety percent of the miners get arrested or whatever, the the system will recover from that error, for lack of a better word. So the um, this federation is, is a, it's just too easy. It's just saying we're going to just have these people, these trusted few people are just better than other people, they're more trustworthy or whatever, and they can steal all the coins at any time. Uh, that's just not very creative to me. Uh, and uh, you know, eventually it, it has a big scaling problem as well. Like there's a big difference between having like $10 million, $100 million. You have t a federation of 10 people, it's ten million dollars. That's just a million dollars per person that you have to bribe. But then it goes to a hundred million, it goes to a billion, it goes to ten billion. And eventually, it reaches a point where there's no possible way anyone could resist the temptation to to so break the scheme. So the better thing is to not have the federation at all and to have some some process that involves the miners. The miners profit more when the network does well. The miners are constantly on the hook to be as competitive as possible. They must. They're, they're constantly going bankrupt. Every two weeks, the difficulty resets and fires the bottom 50% performers. So they are, they are like right razor on the, you know, right on the margin, and they are the very, um, they're in a very precarious situation actually. And that's what we want. We want, we want to keep them in a very precarious situation where they can't cause any trouble for us. We want them to be worried about finding cheap electricity and not, and not thinking about anything else. Um, but also, where if they start to do something wrong, the process will just correct over time uh, without anyone doing anything. But if the federation, if it doesn't work, you have to find a new federation. So I think that's terrible. Yes. So as someone who hasn't really heard about this project before, is it like that's a fine. true side chain? Is it some well, that's what I think. Stuff? Don't say that out loud because you know it's a controversial, it's a hot button issue. Mm -hmm. You can't say that out loud. <laughs> you can only say it, you know, man to man. <laughs> but uh, that's, I kind of do think that, but I'm not sure that that's a fair characterization. But that, in my head, I wonder about like where is all the other the other ideas of this of this nature. So, what you would want is for there to be something where it's the rules, the 
the, the design of the project is being held up, or rather, I say the merit of the project is being held up by its design, which is the design doesn't rely on any individual people to like do the work, which is the problem with the Federation. It's flowing from, the, the virtue is flowing from the people you chose to be in the Federation, whereas if you card it up with rules, then it's flowing from the rules. And the rules are just objective rules that are independent of what any single individual believes. That is how it gets scaled you know, horizontally and vertically to like everyone in the world. So that is what I would, that is what I would say, but I don't know how many people would, would agree with that. Well, real quick, does, uh, does anyone in the back have any questions? We've had a lot of questions up front. Anyone in the back? All right, go ahead. We're, we're, in, the we're in the back for a reason. <laughs> Where is the implementation process? Oh yeah, it's really, this is basically finished. So we have software you can download, as I said, we have windows.exe files. It's, it's reached that point. So and we have a nice GUI. Then you go to drivechain.info slash releases. If you just go to drivechain.info, it's the first link. You can download, and that's what you should do. You should not ask other people for their opinion. You should just find, find a virtual box or something where this won't be harmed. You know, in case of a crazy person who's going to steal all of your Bitcoin, of which most most people are like that, uh, you just shouldn't run software just because someone tells you to. But this, the best way to learn is to just run the software because we did work pretty hard on the GUI. The GUI tries to explain what is happening, and that is the better way. I personally know that I didn't have a clue how Bitcoin worked until I downloaded the software for the first time and received money from the faucet. I waited for the six confirmations. I was like, okay, now I have six, now I'm good. And I closed the software and then like two or three days later I opened it again. I was like, oh, I have, I have like 400 confirmations. I was like, how, what's going on? Like, this doesn't make any sense. So you, you can't really understand it until you use it, unfortunately, I think that's, but that's the best way to learn and learning is the most important thing. We have a question all the way in the back. How do you think about um, getting BIPs 300 or 300 merged in? Uh, I think it will take forever, yeah. I mean, just look at how, look at the trend. Like there used to be, I made a table and I tweeted about this. There used to be like every like quarter there was like a soft fork. I'm talking like 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015. And sometimes there were like even like three or five at, at the same time. And uh, now then there was a long, there was a, we had a long awkward period where there was only the one SegWit soft fork that was activated in a very controversial or very, I'll say contentious manner in, uh, in, in 2017. And now we've gone from 2017 to today, still Taproot has not activated. It has, the signaling is in place, but it hasn't actually activated yet. So if you just see the trend is just lengthening, um, without anyone planning it this way, or without even passing any comment on it, you just see that it's just become harder and harder to get any change through, even one that is not controversial at all, such as Taproot, which really, there is no controversy yet, in my opinion. Um, and so this project does, it's just, it's the scale of what it affects. Uh, it affects all altcoins, it affects the people who today decide what does go into Bitcoin Core and what does not it has an enormous effect. So, it's uh, I think it would probably take a while. And definitely, people message me if people are running altcoins, they message me and they're like, "Oh, like, can I add drive chain to my project or whatever?" I think eventually it will be a very different route where you see other projects will add it, and then everyone will get to see more about how it works, and then just slowly it will become kind of, um, like either it will be proven and then it will just like they have, they'll have to add it or, um, or it will just not, it will be, it will not pan out in which case then obviously it wouldn't add it. But I think it will, it will take a while and I don't think it will go through the, the way it has normally gone, which is long discussions, you know, like forever on BitDev's mailing list and kind of a quasi guild like monopolist uh, something process that just like takes a very long time now and is a lot of people are worried about 
how something will look or what it will imply. So I think that it's just I just think it'll take a really long time. But it will go faster if people download the software and learn about it. So if you if you would like it to go faster, you should learn for yourself exactly what's going on and then uh, talk about it. That would be. Like 20, we'll do two more questions. <laughs> Like 2030, 2040, yeah. what's your... Yeah, something like that. 20, uh, 23, 800. Uh, I don't know, like, that's a good question. So the other thing is, you know, I haven't actually finished it. We keep uh, tinkering with it. So uh, that would be the bottleneck, obviously. Like, I, it's not until I say that it's done that it could possibly be merged at all. There, then you'd want to have a big testing suite I would say definitely, like, uh, not this year, I would say, I think it's possible that it could be in, in 2022. I think that's possible. I don't know. It's also possible that it could be like 2023, 2024, or some other number. <laughs> <laughs> One more question. Yes, you got it. Yeah, somebody else can ask. All right, you got it. You got cool. the only one. Awesome. Um, is there like an active effort, um, I mean, behind drive chain, is there also like an active effort, effort perhaps, you know, to, uh, mm -hmm. to discuss uh, with miners that would be sort of like trying to be involved with the security? Hmm. Well, it's become, ever since the Civil War, it's become um, a faux pas to talk to miners at all or do anything that implies that they have power. So. That would probably be counterproductive, but the, uh, yeah, I know a lot of miners. Like, the miners just want to be told what to do, honestly. In fact, they even said this out loud. If you go to the, the Scaling 2 Hong Kong video in December 2015, which is on YouTube, it's a miner panel, they, like, have no idea what's going on at all. The whole time, they were just like, someone just tell us what to do. So they're worried about their own concerns about, like, finding cheap power and then finding reliable chip hardware and stuff like that. So so they're not they're actually the least uh, they and, and especially with something like this where they would gain more transaction fee revenues and potentially a higher Bitcoin exchange rate through the coin becoming multi purpose, they would be the you know, they're they're not the um, linchpin, so to speak. So that wouldn't necessarily do that. The the better thing is to keep making actual sidechain software, so like RSK, a copy of different altcoins that are useful, of which there are a few, you know, there are really a few, like I uh, like David Forex project, the Sia coin, I like uh, Zcash, so it's good, it's good to copy, things that are good to copy, because that would actually be nice to have a feature. Um, so that would be nice to get something that people would actually use, that would be better. The miners, you know, they just, and they don't even want to like, be in the center of any controversy because it ended so badly for them. It worked out so well for them before. So uh, I'm gonna ask the last, last question, uh, which is, uh, you know, one of the biggest concerns that people come up with, whether you call it concern trolling or legitimate, depends on your perspective, I suppose, is like, hey, hash rate escrow is controlled by miners. Why would yeah. miners just, take all the coins if they have really, you know, high time preference, uh, you know, from a very valuable side chain. Um, I think drive chain has some interesting uh, answers to that question, but my question specifically is, uh, can drive chain security model be improved? Like, I sent you the Zendu white paper, which uses like ZK snarks to prove that Sidechain withdrawals are valid, uh, so, so the payout process isn't actually controlled by miners. It's more dependent on cryptography. Have you looked at some of these other approaches, and what, what do you think of that? Well, I think anything can always be improved. Uh, anyone who says something can't be improved is a very suspicious person. So I think anything can be improved. I do think that it's misunderstood. Like as I was saying at the very beginning, the you could make it so that the that Miners could never steal from the, it wouldn't be a hack. The whole point of naming it hash rate escrow is to like underline the fact that that was possible. But you that would be its own nightmare, uh, and you don't actually want that at all. Um, so, could it be improved? Yeah, certainly, I think it could. Uh, I don't think though that anyone has come up with anything good because 
whatever you come up with will have to be something where either you, like the hammer has to fall somewhere. Either you're forcing layer one people to do more work with ZK snark situation. If you're gonna use them to actually, if they're gonna have teeth and do something, then it has to be mandatory on layer one. Uh -huh. But then now you're screwing with layer one, which is the sack, this is a terrible thing to do because you can't, you can't mess with layer one. People want Bitcoin to be safe from tampering. So whatever you like, even if you wanted to do something that was like perfect, theoretically perfectly cryptographically secure sidechain, it would still be the case that this new thing that you come up with is mandatory on layer one. So whatever you come up with, uh, you have this problem that the hammer has to fall somewhere. And so it's intentional to push all of the stuff far away onto the layer two because I want it to be the case that no one on Bitcoin Core ever suffers at all by the fact that this exists. And if anything, if anyone suffers, it's the people who choose to opt in and send their coins onto this network, like someone putting their coins on, on, on Strike or something on the Lightning Network. So they, they choose to put their coins there. Maybe that has some convoluted ZK Snark thing. The problem with the, um, the problem with the improvements is the data availability. So something can be um, very interesting computationally, but at the end of the day, how do you know that, for example, the ZK Snark is working? Well, you'd have to down take it, get all the transactions, and and download them, and then do computations on them to see that the ZK Snark is working. So maybe the ZK Snark works really well, but how do you know that ZK Snark is working in the first place? Well, at the end of the day, someone has to just download all the messages and process all of them. So it's just like, who's, where is the hammer going to fall? That's the idea that I'm gonna say. So I just say, it's all about responsibility. If you want the new features, you take the risk. The risk is actually really low because in order for the miners to steal the funds, they you have to have three months of 100% of the blocks consecutively behaving, which is like, in my view, like something that almost can't happen. But but if you if you want to opt in, you bear the risk. If you don't opt in, then you you have no suffering and you know, no inconvenience at all because of the fact that Bit300 exists on your um, Bitcoin coin. So that is that's the answer.